So in our next mill projects video, we're going to make some uh, fairly simple additions to our one, two, three blocks. The, the one, two, three blocks, as with, with most things, are designed to be really used on, on a larger mill. They've got uh, 3 8 16 threaded, threaded holes, which for, for us are, are way too big. Uh, for, for our machines, we want to use smaller fasteners. And all of these holes are, are designed to where you can tap them uh, if you want to, or you can just have a smooth through hole. There are only five that are tapped on, on this particular block. Now these can be used to, to raise a workpiece up off the table, either in a one inch height, or if you place them in this orientation, a two inch height, or if you place them in this orientation, now a, a three inch height. And this is really useful because on the sure line, with the column and the three inserts on it, the, it's, it's difficult to get a cutter all the way down to the table, so oftentimes you'll need to raise the workpiece up. These are also very useful for, for large workpieces that won't fit in the vise. And for a variety of operations, you'll see me using these in, in many of my videos. Now to begin, we want to clamp these down to the table. And I'm just going to use a, a square to clamp it down. And you can see I've used a threaded rod down to a T-nut in the T-slot and a washer and nut. And it's best to put uh, two of these in there just to, to give it a good amount of security. Now one of the problems that I'm kind of running into with these is having these items extend out the top is sometimes inconvenient. So how can we clamp these to the table yet still keep the tops flush and without any other protrusions? So that's going to be one of the items we're going to make is, is a method of doing that. Now another thing we can do is we can use a longer stud all the way through the block to a, a T-slot and T-nut to hold a clamping element on there to clamp a workpiece down. So this is very convenient, but we do have the drawback of we can really only use uh, four holes in the alignment that I have here. This one, this one, this one, and this one back here that I can put a, a, threat, a threaded rod all the way down through the block to the T-slots. What about all these other holes? Maybe I want to use one of them. Uh, it's going to give me a little bit more flexibility to be able to use these other holes. So I wanted to take a look at, again, a way that we can uh, use a threaded stud in any of these holes without necessarily going down to the T-slots on the bottom. And ideally, we want that threaded rod to be 1032 rather than the 3816 just to match our machine sizes a little bit better. And then another application of the one, two, three blocks is they can be used in combination. And in this case, we would be creating a right angle plate. And it's a fairly accurate right angle plate as well, depending on the quality of one, two, three blocks you purchased and what their tolerance are. So the materials we're gonna use on this are going to be some steel rods. So this will be the first time that we're cutting steel on the mill in this training series. These are 12L14, which is a leaded steel considered to be free machining. And I've selected it because of its ease in machining for our first steel. These are 5 16 inches in diameter. And I've selected 5 16 because it will freely slide through the holes. Depending on your blocks and their, their quality of machining, these are fairly cheap blocks. Uh, you might have some that have 3 8 inch through holes. Also, if you wanted to, you could start off with a 3 8 inch and then uh, turn it down to, I believe these are, are uh, closer to 11 30 seconds in size if you wanted a tighter fit. But some of these holes have uh, a fair amount of burrs on them and uh, may not be perfectly well aligned. So the, the smaller rod is going to work out well for these cheaper blocks. So to make the, the rod a little bit more convenient and easy to use, I want to mill a flat on the surface. Now we can either mill this flat the entire length of our pieces, or we can simply uh, do plunge cuts and mill smaller flats in the locations that we want our holes, or whether they be through holes or threaded holes to be at. This will make it a little bit easier to, to get things lined up through them, just having a flat surface to register against. So here's an example of why we need the, the one, two, three blocks to raise work pieces up. Um, I've got the head of the machine as far down as it will go. And as you can see with a cutter in the collet, we're not getting anywhere near to being able to cut this surface. 
So instead of uh, change my clamping setup, which would have been more time consuming, I changed my cutter setup. So I've got an end mill holder in here with a 3 8 inch mill before I had a, a collet with a quarter inch mill. And I've chosen a four flute cutter here. Generally with steel, you want to have a higher number of teeth because you want the uh, cut per tooth to be smaller since we're dealing with a harder material. But steel does clear a little bit easier than aluminum. So we don't need the clearance in the flutes so much. And then with 12L14, you really don't need to use cutting fluid, but we're gonna put some on there anyways. Uh, it's, it never hurts to have a little bit of cutting fluid on there. And since this is the first time we've machined this material, we're going to start out fairly easy. I've set my zero height by bringing down and touching the tool to the workpiece. And for our first cut, we're just going to do five thousandths. Now I'm going to do another pass at uh, a total, so another ten thousandths down. Now we're going to go fifteen thousandths. And this material is cutting quite easily. It's, it's definitely living up to its name of being free machining. So I'm just gonna take another 10 thousandths cut here and that's going to be what I want for my finished uh, depth. That gives me a, a wide enough and flat enough surface for my needs. Now to speed things up, I'm just going to mill down the length of the piece rather than continue making cross cuts. And I'm not too terribly concerned about surface finish here. Now just for clearance on my machine and the way my setup is at, I flip the workpiece around and I'm gonna feed that flat through to where I can clamp now my set screws down on our newly created flat. So this will allow us to uh, have that flat to be in the same location for the full length of the bar. I've got some things sitting on my bench that are vibrating and, and just rattling. The machine isn't actually making that noise. And we just keep repeating this process of moving the piece down and clamping it on the flats and then milling down the length of it. So now we have uh, what's sometimes referred to as a D-shaped bar or a bar with a flat milled on it. And you can see we've got some set screw marks here. I was using a cut point set screws. If this was something where where you were concerned about the finish, then uh, you wouldn't want to use a cut point. You'd want to use either a flat point or put a uh, small pad or something in there to, to prevent you from marring that up. Next thing we're going to do is start cutting these to lengths. Now we could do this in the mill and, and simply make cross cuts. Uh, with a 3 8 inch cutter, we're, we're going to be wasting out 3 8 inches of material. Um, but if you only have a mill, that's certainly one option that you can follow. You can also put um, a smaller cutter in here, and you could use the rotary table on a right angle. We haven't made a right angle fixture yet for it, so uh, we can't do that here. For, so for convenience and to waste the least amount of material, uh, I'm going to simply cut these off on the lathe. So now I'm over at the lathe and starting our cutoff operation. And this piece is roughly two inches long. We can cut some two inches, some three inches, some one inch. Remember for cutoff operations, you want to use a very low speed and lots of lubrication. So another option that I'm showing here is you can mill the flat while it's in the vise uh, if you pre-cut the pieces to length. Just be very careful because you obviously don't want to uh, cut into the jaws of your vise and in this case we are going to be down between the jaws. And this is allowing me to use a quarter inch cutter in a collet and then additionally I'm going to take the little nub off the end 
So that may be a, a more convenient option for you is to cut them individually uh, one at a time in the vise depending on how many you're doing. So I put some marking paint on one of the bars that we have the flat on and in order to mark the whole locations I'm simply going to insert it into the block and this one I've made a little bit oversized. Then I'm going to place set screws in two of the threaded holes and I've tightened those down with a hex wrench. So now the bar won't move and I can use a transfer punch if I want to mark that center hole location. Now a transfer punch is just a, a rod of a specific diameter. In this case I've got an 11 30 seconds and then it's got a point on it. So we'll put this into the hole and give it a tap with a hammer. And here's the result that we get. If we wanted to center punch these two circles or have a circle in the center, then we can just put the bar in the next section which has uh, the threaded hole in the center, tighten it down, and then punch through these two through holes. So now we have to drill some holes in here and we can choose to whether we drill all clearance holes or whether we drill all holes for tapping or a combination thereof. I'm going to do these two end ones as clearance holes and then the center one as a tapped hole on this particular piece. This 12L14 that we're using here, uh, it's a leaded steel again, and it is actually quite nice to work with. I mean, it's actually probably a little bit easier in many ways to work than even aluminum, in that it machines just as well, but we don't have the problems with uh, stickiness that we get with aluminum. So these clearance holes are number sevens. So it's a free-fitting clearance hole. And now I've switched to a number 18 bit for the hole that I plan to tap. Uh, before, when we were tapping 1021, we were using a number 21 bit, and that's for aluminum. We probably could get by with it here as well, but we're going to go ahead and go with a number 18, which is typically used for uh, steel and iron and, and harder materials such as that. And we could go somewhere in between, between an 18 and a 21, since this steel uh, is fairly soft and does cut quite well. So we've shown tapping before. I'm going to leave it in the vise but move it over to the side and tap this off camera. So here's one of the bars inserted into a block that I've uh, completed. And this one has uh, two through holes so I can put T-nuts through the block and it has one threaded hole in the center. So this has the advantage that we can now clamp the blocks down to the table uh, and be completely flush and then we can put these uh, threaded holes wherever we want on the table. So we can tighten the one, two, three block down. And normally we'd want to square this up, but it's very securely held on there now. And we have a, a threaded stud that we can take in and out and, and it's not dependent upon having a T-slot directly underneath. And I've made a, a several different variations. So some that are three long, whether they have threaded or, or through holes and, and whatever combination. I've got uh, some that have five holes. So these are roughly two inches long to fit in this direction on the block, although you can use them in any direction you want. Um, and then the, this is three inches long. And then I've got just a couple of samples of uh, one inch long ones, again with through holes and threaded holes. So in addition to being able to use these inside the 123 block, we can use them on the outside as well and clamp items down in this fashion. Or if we wanted a, a rounded surface, we've got that option as well. And then we can put a, a nut and a washer on there. So you can really see where, where these have a, a lot of useful applications. And it's a very, very simple part to make. So additionally, these can be used to clamp T blocks, or sorry, can be used to clamp one, two, three blocks together, whether we stack them like this, or if we want to make an angle plate like so. So I hope you found this useful. It is a very, very simple project. It doesn't take very long to make these, and you can make a variety of them in, in different shapes and sizes, whether you file or mill the flat on them, or whether you leave the bars round. It's, it's up to you. Either way will work. 
and both have advantages and disadvantages. And you'll probably be seeing me use these quite frequently in upcoming videos, as I believe it makes work holding with the one, two, three blocks on our smaller machines uh, much nicer and easier to accomplish. So if you've enjoyed this quick video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure and subscribe if you want to see future videos like this. And if you have any requests or comments, uh, feel free to leave them below.